Welcome to Rebuilding a Large Clarkson Single Cylinder Vertical Steam Engine. This is part 8, machining the gland nut so that it is adjustable when fitted to the engine. And the job starts by scribing a couple of lines which will allow me to position it in the machine vice accurately. This situation at the moment with just a plug is no good at all because when it's inside the engine, right up inside the trunk guide, you can't adjust it. Here is the gland nut accurately positioned in the machine vice and the milling process begins. So what I need to do, as per the drawing, is mill some notches in it. I'm not going to mill quite as many notches as there are on the drawing because I think it weakens the part. And four are plenty. Once the four slots have been milled, this will allow the use of a tool to slacken and tighten the gland nut. When the gland nut is in the position it's supposed to be in and the engine is reassembled, it really is in a very inaccessible position. So it's going to be quite easy to make some sort of a tool or even use a screwdriver to adjust the gland right underneath the cylinder. This is a very simple job and it's very easy to do it. I could use a rotary table, I have one of those, but it will take too long to set up. By scribing the lines accurately and using these lines as a datum against the machine vice jaws, it's really simple. And as you've just seen, once you've machined a couple of the slots, you can use those as the datum. All you need to do then is use a depth stop so you don't go too deep and hey presto, you have four nicely milled slots. If you did wish to follow the drawing, you just use more scribed lines and line up on the machine vise. But I really don't think I need to do that. I think four is going to be very substantial and quite strong. All of these videos that I create on YouTube about rebuilding steam engines are based on my experience. I'm not the best engineer in the world and I freely admit that. I've just had quite a lot of experience and I have a good working knowledge of the materials. However, I have received a message from a viewer telling me that I was wrong about cast iron. I'll let this comment go because I felt it was slightly useful to anyone who wants to know a bit more about cast iron. Most of these type of things that I get I just don't let onto the channel. This viewer told me that it was free graphite in the cast iron that made it easy to machine, not carbon, as I said. Now I'm really sorry about this, I do get it wrong periodically. I even replied to this viewer saying as far as I was aware, graphite was carbon, that's as much as I know. Speaking as a simple carbon life form myself. When I'm making these videos, I have to study and think which is the best amount of information to let through. If I let every little bit of information through, the videos will last about an hour. On these videos, I never use a script. I go in the workshop and do the job, bring the pictures back into the studio, assemble them in the right order, and then I watch the pictures and speak over them, as I'm doing at the moment. The last video that I did, including doing the job in the workshop, took six hours to produce. Making this small part didn't take that long, but it took a while to speak about it. After thoroughly cleaning the part to remove all of the metal debris, it's time to fit it in position. This stuff I'm using is called graphited yarn, and this is some very old graphited yarn that I unpick from a full-size piece of woven graphited yarn, because I find the modern stuff to be fairly horrible. You will notice the direction that I'm winding it in. This is intentional so that the end of the piece of graphited yarn is in the same direction as the thread, so as you tighten the thread, it pulls the yarn tight too. You can do it the other way, I don't suppose it's going to make that much difference, but it's something I've always done. You'll notice little patches of oil all over the place on my fingers and on the pieces. I do this on purpose. I always feel it's a good idea to lubricate as you assemble these things, so it gives the components a good coating of oil for the initial run. It is very important not to over tighten the gland nut. You can severely score the piston rod if you do that. Here I'm actually removing the gland nut because I didn't put enough graphited yarn in. So I've got the piece that I had in there and I'm cutting another piece a bit longer. It's important to make sure that the gland has a bit of adjustment to go. It's no good putting the graphited yarn in and tightening the gland nut hard up against the cylinder cover itself. Once again you see plenty of lubrication and I'm starting the wind from behind the piston rod. And before I screw the gland nut into the cylinder cover, I'm pushing all the graphited yarn in a little bit because you don't want to make it so that the graphited yarn binds the thread of the gland nut. You may think I'm labouring this somewhat, and I suppose I am really, but it's a very important part of the rebuild, fitting the gland nut in place. Here you can see there's plenty of room for adjustment, and now I'm just wiping off the surplus oil. 
I'd like to thank the viewer who sent a message saying, what did I use as a rag? Is it my underpants? No, it's an old t-shirt. I just thought I'd set the record straight there. As I push the piston in and out, you can see that it's quite firm and the gland nut is not too tight. Aha, it's painting time. And just for a change, I'm going to play some soothing music from my large library of self-composed soothing music, whilst simultaneously, and at the same time, speaking about the molecular structure of cast iron and the amount of free graphite that it has and carbon and stuff like that. With the cast iron, it is not high carbon, but free graphite, and this is what gives it self-lube properties. Iron should have very low to zero carbon. Unlike steel, which does have carbon. It is the form of the carbon that differs. Graphite is the softest form of carbon and the name comes from the word graph as in right. The distinction is important because graphite is known for its lubricity and exists in cast iron as free graphite. And it is this that makes cast iron such a good material for sliding surfaces. Carbon, in the form it exists in steel, is both harder than graphite and not as free. And so the mechanical properties of steel differ from those of iron. Perhaps this can be likened to distinguishing between augmented perfect and diminished intervals. A fifth is a fifth, but the forms sound very different. Hang on a minute, what's going on here? This is not about cast iron. Time to go, I think. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.